Welcome back everyone to another Cow Talk. Uh, this episode actually we are in Denaire, California. I'm standing next to uh, Vance Alm of County Lime Farms. Um, Vance, thanks for having us out on your farm today. Can you talk to me a little bit of where we are standing in your farm and what you got going on here? Great, welcome, welcome. This is uh, County Lime, we're a 2000 cow, okay. 32 robot, Jersey, all Jersey dairy. Uh, the facility was a retrofit. Right now we're between the mature cow barns. Uh, okay. Behind us we've got four robots uh, in each pin and two Lunas with Lunas pushing up feed. Uh, as I said, this was a retrofit, so it took a year to go from no robots to all robots. And we shut down our milk barn completely on July 10th of 2022. Okay, and so um, I know we're standing behind uh, this bar, in front of this barn here, I should say, and there's four of these that are replicated like this that we're going to walk through today? Yes, four twins, four, uh, four carbon copies here. Four carbon copies of this, all right. And so how about uh, we go start taking a look and uh, seeing what the barn layout's all about? Great. Perfect, let's have this So we didn't make it too much further down here in the alleyway, um, but Vance, I, I got to just stop and ask you about your layout here. So um, we have the four robots in these pens, um, and then it looks like uh, a, sep a little bit of a separation area behind for management. Can you talk to me about this pen design, this uh, layout of the robots, and how you came about that? Sure. So this facility was originally built as a robot facility, so okay. we had a, uh, a retrofit. And, uh, we've got a limitation in the center of the dairy behind these robots. Okay. There's a 700-foot uh, concrete tunnel underground that we couldn't obviously tear out or go over so yeah, uh, after touring farms we came with the uh, two head to head or tail to tail designs yep. with a post sort afterwards so we actually have 40 beds behind the robot and do all of our management behind the robot so they can once they're back behind the robot they can yeah. still get food water and recycle to the two end robots and then they'll sort to the back so it's actually been a really good design uh, yeah. cow flow wise management wise and the max the cows are walking is uh, 220 feet from okay. one end of the pen to the robot. So okay. it's really helped uh, on hoof care yeah. and uh, feet and legs of the cows. And so then can you talk to me, what did you have um, in your previous system for management wise? Did you just have a separate pen, a hospital pen type situation? Or do you have more, are you more cow touches now? Um, um, so, so definitely less cow touches now. We still run a separate hospital pen okay. in a conventional hospital barn, but yep. we'll do all of our breeding, our uh, herd health management, vaccinations behind the robot. So now instead of uh, locking cows every day, chalking and, and interacting with the cows every day, we intervene with the cows only when necessary. So you let the cows do the cows. Yeah, so it's, it's really saved uh, two hours a day on our herd check when they come through. Our breeder's done in a couple hours yeah. now, as opposed to all morning. So it's probably in total saved seven to eight man hours okay. a day yep. on on the labor side. Okay, perfect, sweet. Well, we'll keep walking here and uh, looking at what else is going on. All right, so we took a couple more steps down uh, the alleyway and I noticed we have um, Juno's kind of all over the farm and this one's here charging. Um, Vance, can you talk to me, you know, when you were putting in astronauts, what was their decision to also add in Juno's to your farm? So we were, you know, astronauts part of the decision there was looking at labor and the, the okay. challenges in California at labor, changing yeah. overtime rules. Um, so we, we took a look at the astronauts as we were doing, uh, the Juno, sorry, yeah. as we were doing the project and said, you know, maybe we need to consider these. So we've got eight Junos that cover the whole farm with the exception of our calves as they transition between Hutches uh, cut eight, eight man hours a day out wow. of our, our labor force. I get a, a more consistent uh, push up. We've done a feed audit. Push up was consistent during the day yeah. uh, and the night it was hit and miss. We did a, a one week, 24 hour feed audit. We saw that, that was a, a point of weakness in our yep. facility. And since then, intakes have gone up, yeah. uh, feed consistency. And we're, we're feeding five times a day now, so we're just uh, smaller amounts. More often, uh, so just keep pressure feed in front of the cows. And so the consistency, what what was prior to having Junos, how did you push feed up before? What was that? Uh, so we pushed feed up with a, a tractor okay. with a, a Gaudi wheel on the back. So feeder would push up twice a day, uh, the breeder would do it twice a day while he was here and the night guys. We tried to do it every two hours. Yeah. And then uh, we had two night guys and the milkers responsible in the evening hours. Fine, 
Okay. So now that allowed some of the other individuals to focus on their roles and Correct. then have consistency here. Correct. And it took the uh, least, least efficient piece of machinery off the area. We don't need it anymore. <laughs> well, that's always a win as well. All right. We can keep ending up this way. All right, so continuing down on this barn here, um, Vance, I noticed we have um, a beacon behind us for the cow locator system. Um, I know that works with the collars that the cows wear, so can you talk to me about your decision to implement that on your farm and maybe how that's changed some of your routine? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We, uh, we looked at the cow locator system and they've been helping group sizes of about 250 to 10 to 260. Yeah. We knew there would be some fetching, so we were trying yeah. to do it as efficient as possible with labor. So. Um, got the cow locator system in. Every one of our guys carries a, uh, a pixel. I've got an iPhone here in my hand, and I can bring up the fetch list here. Okay. And we're here in barn six, so we'll just click right here on six. And here's our five cows we need to fetch. And if I hit locate, there's all five of our cows located. Green means they're actively moving at the moment. Red means they've been located there within the last five minutes and haven't moved so you guys can go walk down uh, sub foot accuracy on this and their cows are right there for fetching really saves uh, the labor on it uh, the boys have gotten really good and rely on these uh, locators for everything for the animals that are missing on post sort 90 percent 95 percent get post sorted okay. the few that are missed are, are easy to locate efficient and safe stuff. I was gonna say the biggest, yeah, saves time. I can only imagine if you were trying, you know, walk around here looking for one cow yeah. right behind you. It could exactly. take a little bit of time. So yeah, we don't, you. don't have to lock anything up to find them. So oh, that's awesome. Let them still maintain what they're doing, and you can exactly. just go and find them. Perfect. Sweet. All right. Well, we can keep going into yep. this. Like. All right. So we made it into a robot room here. Uh, I know the robots are clean right behind us, but Vince, you know, you talked about having Horizon on your farm. You talked about all your employees having a phone to connect to it. So I see a computer here with Verizon pulled up. Is this yep. something that's in every in every barn? So we have we have one in every barn, not every room, but every barn okay. has a, a computer in it, so the guys can make sure any cows they do is up, are updated right away. Yeah. If they want more information on the cow, they're able to come come get it right away. And they'll they'll look at their. Uh, our health reports is one of the main ones they're looking at while they're in here. Uh, health treatment tasks. And then the breeder relies on his uh, insemination. Cows sorted for that. And we're in the process of adding a semen tank to every barn so he won't have to move any equipment from barn to barn. He'll be able to physically move and everything he needs is right on the site. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. I, I, just, I haven't, uh, this is something I haven't seen yet, but we're having one with each barn right there. And so I just think the efficiency and how easy it is to be right in here and have one right there. Yeah, I'm just trying to make it access the information available at all times to you guys and me or myself or anybody else. It's on the farm and it's, it's nearby. It's, it does as fast as yeah. possible to move on to the next So then how is that different from how you had access to data before? Was it just in one spot on one computer? It, it was in one spot or on our, our handhelds as we did our, our herd checks and then you had to go back to the main office to do all you got entry, this way it's clean, it's clean, it's clean. Yeah, it's way more efficient, perfect, yeah. sweet. All right, so I mentioned that we have the robots cleaning right behind us, and as you can see, that's what they're doing. Um, Vance, can you talk to me a little bit about your sanitation and cleaning protocols here on this farm and sure. what you guys do? Sure, so uh, we're, first off, we're washing robots three times a day. Uh, we, we did a little different setup in here. Uh, the traditional containers are pretty small, and it's, See, with so many robot rooms, we didn't want to have guys lugging containers and chemicals back and forth. So we did a mobile delivery system and then plumbed all our chemicals into the room with dead man switches that are here on the wall. Okay. So you have to be holding it to pump chemicals as soon as you let it go. It won't overflow your chemicals. So just to reduce back injuries, uh, more efficiency for labor. So all the chemicals are pumped overhead, uh, a little better price buying the bulk yeah. in small containers. And then we also have one employee dedicated to daily maintenance and cleaning the robot rooms. Okay. And that was a challenge at first. Uh, that I watched a daily actually seminar, a YouTube video, and saw the foamers. So we've added the foamers to every room on the dairy, and they do a tremendous job at keeping these rooms clean. Yeah. Um, 
and get in the robot clean very quickly. You know, we'll foam them. He's in and out of the room. There's probably 20 minutes of room a day. Um, and that's something you said you do every day? Every day. Every day. Foam robots. As, as he performs his daily maintenance. So he'll, he'll do the daily maintenance on this robot, foam it, come over, do daily maintenance here, go back and rinse the foam off, and repeat the process there. So he just keeps jumping one robot ahead time we found you know, a lot of making sure it's done on a daily basis keeps our run time up and eliminates a lot of the small problems we have at startup. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna mention that. Like not only right do these rooms look great, a lot of that preventative maintenance probably is really helpful yes. from eliminating maybe some future challenges. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the uh, small problems that we get there are yeah. caught right away. So. Alright, thank you. So we made our way out into uh, one of the pens. We have the robots um, behind us that we were just in that robot room. Um, Vance, can you talk to me about your why? Of what, what was the decision to put in astronauts on your farm and maybe some of the impacts you've seen? So, so our why was looking at the future, looking at labor, wanting sustainability going forward. So yeah. how, do, how do we accomplish that and set this place up for the future? I've got three young kids. Okay. Uh, I don't know if they want to come back or not yet. They're still yeah. deciding, but yeah. I want it to be an option for them. So after researching all the different options, we decided this was going to be the best uh, answer for our future. We're in California. We're limited. We can't grow anymore. So how do we make the farm more efficient? So um, as, as we took that into effect, we looked at how do we treat cows? How do we, do we get the most out of the cows? So since we've done the robots, um, we're up six pounds of milk okay. currently, wow. uh, year over year, yep. on, on out the door milk for cows. So the goal is to get up uh, 8.3, gets us the same milk out of the, out the door as we have with 20 quarter cows. So really? Less cows, same amount of milk. So. And how do we accomplish that? We were able to do that with, with the Lailies. We've got two feeders behind us. Okay, yeah, I so, saw that. So we can target feed these cows. So everybody's gonna get a corn gluten pellet. Okay. And then we have an energy pellet that we target to cows based off production. So instead of feeding an average, we're now feeding to the individual cow. More efficient on the uh, feed conversion yep. and, and the cost as well. Uh, we're currently looking at adding the third feed probably okay. to target our fresh cows in those first 60 days. With everything going to PMR ration and everybody yeah. gets the same bunk feed, we just want to give those first 60 day cows a little bit more. So yeah. Lately, Lately provided the opportunity and the flexibility in their astronaut design to accomplish some of those things. That's awesome. And so um, I know when we first started this video, you talked about how you know, you put in astronauts in July of 2021, correct? July of 2021, the first ones came online, and we did seven startups between July 12th of 21 and July 11th of 22. So exactly a year, we we retrofitted these pens one at a time, yeah, and got cows started. Got cows started, and so uh, I I just wanted to say thank you for letting us come out on your farm today, walking us through. Um, the barn and everything you have here. Uh, this is an awesome facility. I can't wait to be back. I know this wasn't my first time on this farm. So thank you, and I'll let you get back to your day. Anytime. Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you.